It's been my privilege to have led this incredible organisation and to have seen it grow and develop over the last three years from a different perspective than before my election as President. I'm happy that our association has a very bright future. The exemplary work, dedication and commitment of the full-time team and the volunteers that I've seen every day assures me of that bright future. I've often been asked by people who are curious about the attraction of Gaelic games, what's so special about the game? What's so special about my involvement in a club and national level? Immediately, my passion and the love of the game bursts out as I try to capture the interest of that person and help them to experience just a snippet of what I feel. It's unique. It's the fastest field game in the world, played by women to a world-class level of skill and excitement, and it's now becoming a worldwide sport. Trying to explain all of that to someone in 30 seconds is impossible. The best way is to get them to join in, get them involved, and expose them to that experience. And so, our association is forever evolving. We've all seen so many developments over the years. We've never been afraid to try out new ideas, new rules, and that's what makes Camogie the vibrant game that it is today. We've had a few, a few evolutionary changes over the last three years. The passing of the affiliation motion at Congress 2013 was a major breakthrough for the association. You stood up when it was, when it was needed, and showed how you value your association. By taking this momentous step, you've invested in your association. You've already seen your investment being utilised in progressing the game as we continuously work to enhance the profile of Camogie and provide funding to sustain and further develop the game. During the last three years, there's been a major advance in the level of cooperation between the Camogie Association the Ladies Gaelic Football Association and the GAA. This was underlined in a particular way when each association passed a similar motion at each of their congresses in 2014, pledging to work together for closer integration of the three codes. This closer cooperation has been developing for quite some time, and many GAA presidents have set about advancing this project at various stages over their terms. GAA presidents, along with the presidents of the two other codes, have continued along the pathway to integration, including the One Club model. Under the presidency of Liam O'Neill, this journey was brought to a new level. We worked hard over the last two and a half years to bring this age-old project a little closer to fruition. And while we haven't quite arrived at the stage we would like to be at, at the end of our three terms, we recognise that we have made huge strides in this area. The clubs, the grassroots level cater for the members of boys and girls, men and women. So it's fitting that the Gaelic Games family of the three organisations have also accepted that responsibility and are endeavouring to cater for the family as a whole. We'll need to support, we will need your support as members and the members of all of the three organisations for this to become a reality. I'm happy in knowing there's a definite momentum now and I know that the three incoming presidents will give it some priority. As they say, Niñart, Gokur, Lekele. For the Camogie Association, there's been many important acts of integration over the last three years. We've entered into a fantastic joint sponsorship deal with Liberty Insurance, sponsors of both the Hurling and the Camogie Championships. This partnership was negotiated with the GAA and unified both codes in what was a very unique occasion. Liberty, recognise the synergy between Hurling and Camogie, and for the first time, two separate Gaelic Games associations were being sponsored by the one company. This partnership with Liberty has given Camogie a huge boost. It has not only given us monetary assistance, it has elevated Camogie status, and it has helped us, it has helped us give us a far greater profile. We all know that the GAA is a high profile leader in Gaelic Games. Their PR channels and public profile is vast, with huge public interest and goodwill towards this phenomenal institution. Now every time hurling is mentioned, Camogie is mentioned. Every time hurling is advertised, Camogie is too. Camogie is included in every GEA publication. This has increased and improved Camogie's profile and awareness of our game, 
and most importantly, recognition and awareness of our players at home and worldwide. Another example of us working together was the joint sponsorship with AIB for the All-Ireland Club Championships. This is a completely new, new venture and a very welcome one since we never had a sponsorship for our All-Ireland Club Championships. AIB, who are proud sponsors of the GAA for over 20 years now. So the inclusion of, of Camogie, a female sport, is a very positive step in recognising a Gaelic Games family. We know we have a great game, and our sponsors are recognising that too. Initially, this was to be a four-year agreement, but last month, AIB announced an extension to this partnership by one more year, which shows how they value our game and our contribution to their business. Here's another example of integration relating to our youth. We all know the importance of looking after our members and the youth who are the future of our association. You have seen the three organisations developing and rolling out the new child welfare and protection policy, Our Games, Our Code. This was launched by Frances Fitzgerald, Minister for Children in Crow Park last year. She praised the initiative and highly commended the foresight of the three codes coming together and recognising the importance of this policy ensuring a safe, happy and healthy environment for the children who are under our care. The annual Biddy Phillips Legends Tournament has gone from strength to strength. It's a great opportunity for older and former players to reconnect with the game and to renew and strengthen old friendships. This year, we scooped a new sponsorship deal for the Legends Tournament from the Crow Park Hotel. The Crow Park Hotel has always been very supportive to the Camogie Association and we're delighted to be working in partnership with them. While this event is filled with great fun, there's a very competitive element today, showing how passionate past players remain towards the game. Thanks to all the counties who continue to support this tournament by entering teams and also supporting the Crow Park Hotel this year. And to those counties who haven't entered this tournament yet, you're missing out, I urge you to think strongly about entering a team next year. One of the association's highlights in 2014 was the Our Game, Your Game campaign. It was new, innovative, and it really captured the imagination of the public. The public got more of an insight into our players' lives, as well as enhancing the game's profile. Intermittent releases of YouTube clips gave momentum to highlighting the championship and our inter-county players' profiles. New imagery and use of social media added a different angle never tried before, and last year was picked up by more media outlets than any other year. A special thank you is due to the Orthro Hoare Joel O'Flynn and the full-time staff for their vision in putting this together, and to the players who gave their precious time to participate in this ca campaign, thus making it so effective. The way we promote our game has changed vastly over the last few years, with the use of modern social media outlets. We have instant match reports, comments and scores as they happen. So through the use of social media and instant updates from the matches, our games and our players are getting more recognition from our supporters and the general public. No longer do we only hear of the King Henrys and the Joe Cannings of this world. We now equally hear of dual players, Breach Corkery, Marina Buckley, Angela Walsh, all incredible athletes. We hear of Anna Geary, Kate Kelly, Anne Dalton, Louise O'Hara, and past players of Therese Marr and Jane Adams, and many, more, and many, many more recognisable names that are recognisable in camogie circles, but have now become household names. These women have risen to fame and worthy recognition in a male-dominated sporting world. Women have shown they have a lot to offer in all aspects of sport and deserve the same recognition as their male counterparts. The fact that they are now getting more recognition is a very welcome development, and while we recognise that, that a lot of groundwork has been made, we still have a lot more ground to cover. All of us here are Camogie aficionados, and most of the dele delegates here today attend Camogie games all year round, and particularly on All-Ireland Days. But I'm very concerned about the overall attendance at our games. The attendance at the All-Ireland last September was under 13,000, and at the All-Ireland Club Finals in March this year, 2,500. They are two very disappointing figures, way down on last year's, last few years, even though, as I said earlier, our PR was at a, an all-time high in 2014. So we can no longer blame the lack of publicity of our games as the main reason for small attendances. While the PR is extremely important, 
we still need more people to attend the Games. If everyone here brought one more person to the Games throughout the year, and maybe splash out and bring two to the All-Irelands, these new people may become regular attendees. If you haven't already read the market research on, um, on attendances in the Orsu Ohor's report, I urge you to read it and consider the findings. We need to dramatically improve our attendances going forward if we are to expect equal coverage of our games <clears throat> and, and also continued investment by our sponsors. On the one hand, we demand equality in all aspects of the game for our players, but somehow the general public don't give their equal respect to the players as evidenced by the lack of attendance of our games. So I urge you to do your part in improving the figures for 2015. Last year, we celebrated an incredible milestone, 110 years since the foundation of Uncommon Comogiecta. While Corla Comogiecta, or Didicus, celebrated 100 years of the Ashburn College's competitions. Both incredible milestones in any sporting organisation. Did you ever take a minute to think what our predecessors, Agnes O'Farley and Maureen Ikeneda, would make of our game today? The changes to the game, how it's played, the structure and the administration of the association. I think they'd be immensely proud of how the game and association has evolved into such a vibrant, vibrant organisation, which boasts, boasts a healthy membership coming up on 100,000. Would they ever have envisaged this growth at home and away? with Camogie now being played in four continents. I have no doubt that along with you and me, this would be, they would be very proud of this growth and fulfilled in the knowledge that they started something very, very special in a period that was very difficult to get authorization and acceptance for women to participate in any sport. However, we cannot afford to rest on our laurels. And so this year, work will commence on the association's new strategic plan to follow on from our game, our passion. Our game, our passion has been a great framework, a template for us to work from over the last five years. The Orsula Horn report has outlined the fantastic progress that we have made against the ambitious targets set out in the plan. This is a great credit to everyone involved, both the full-time team and all of the hundreds of volunteers bringing us to the level we are experiencing today. This is an exciting time for the association, planning for the future continue to identify key areas for development on the field of play and in the administration of the association. We all have a part to play here in identifying areas for inclusion in the new plan and presenting an opportunity for you all to have a shared new vision for the association. When I was up on Tuffa, an ear up on asked me to seriously look at increasing the number of female referees, which had declined dramatically. Being an inter-county referee when I was elected, this project was indeed top of my agenda. Again, with cooperation with the GAA, I researched a structure that they had in place for a number of years in the Referees Academy. With the work and support of the National Referees Committee, led by Chairperson Peter Downey, this project came to fruition. The inaugural Camogie Referees Academy was set up in 2013, and it has successfully increased the number of female inter-county referees at the top level from 2 to 13. This academy identifies and assists the ambitious referees, male and female, and progresses them along their pathway, helping them to achieve their highest level of excellence. The National Referees Committee have done Trojan work here, and now we are seeing the fruits of their labours. I'm sure you all noted that the All-Ireland Junior Final in Crow Park this year was refereed and officiated by an all-female panel. <coughs> this academy will continue on with new recruits at the end of 2015, but to continue its success, we will need your support. At county and provincial levels to assist and recruit potential referees to officiate at all levels of the game. I'm delighted that the new referees pathway is being launched here this weekend and know it will be a very useful guide in addition to all referees to assist them along that pathway. Camogie is now played across four continents, Europe, North America, Asia and Australia. I've been lucky enough during my term to visit and see the growth in Europe and North America and Australia. While I didn't visit Asia in this capacity, I did visit Dubai in recent years on two occasions as a player and saw the enthusiasm and participation among the Irish in Asia. <clears throat> it's really heartening to know 
In a period of high immigration, how Gaelic Games Abroad gives our young people an opportunity to stay in touch with each other and connect with their Irish heritage. Camogie is now played by American-born players competing at a very high standard. Adult Camogie in North America has gone from having five teams in two Camogie-rated competitions in 2010, <coughs> up to 12 teams taking part in three graded competitions in 2014. Underage Camogie participation for six to 16 year olds has gone from one team in 2010 to 13 teams in 2014. It's no longer a game played by first or second generations of Irish abroad. It's now also played by American girls and women born to American parents, some with no Irish connections, an incredible development. While in Europe, the European board continue to, to promote Camogie within their units. There are four or five teams taking part competitively, like the American teams, distance is a huge problem and a huge issue. But they still manage to recruit and play at a very competitive level. And I'm delighted to read in their report that they have a potential for two new clubs. London, we also remarked on them earlier that they will probably might rethink their name from London because of their vast um, inclusiveness, but have nine clubs at adult level. A huge drive has been made here at underage levels. And they've had a successful ABC, which is All Britain Championship. So they are the youth which will fill in to make more adult teams. So there is huge growth and huge development work being done there. And welcome the fact that they will have a new club in 2015 in Liverpool. It's interesting to see how the overseas units work as an integrated model. How all three codes cooperate together to make Gaelic Games a real inclusive family experience. A model we're trying to replicate here in Ireland. At this stage, I hope you've all given or seen on the Camogie website the 100k once-off grant by the Association to All Clubs. This is a large amount of money, but when it is broken down to all clubs, it only equates to 200 euro per club. Granted, it's a small amount, but I'm sure the clubs will be delighted to avail of this initiative and put that 200 voucher towards their individual clubs' needs. So far, only 292 clubs have applied, so there are a lot of more of you to take us up on this once-off initiative. During the last three years, we supported the charity Make-A-Wish Foundation. A lot of you here today will have been present at the All Stars events over the last three years and seen videos and personal presentations of what a difference your generous donations make to granting wishes to terminally ill children. I have a personal interest in this charity through my work as a paediatric nurse and I've seen many children's hearts lifted by the granting of wishes. It not only fulfills the dream of the sick child, but it helps the distressed families coping with in such turbulent times in their lives. It means a lot to them to see their child experience a dream. So I want to thank you for that generosity. You exceeded all expectations with your outstanding, very generous donations. Mila Buikas. The future is extremely bright for the Camogie Association. New clubs are being formed, meaning new members. New members are joining our wonderful organisation. More and more people are aware of our existence. More and more people are recognising our players, our officials, our officers. And we appreciate the deserved respect that people have for our volunteers and our staff. I know the Camogie Association is in a great place. We are definitely going in the right direction. With the development of the new strategic plan to nurture and guide us and keep us focused on the future of our game and the ongoing vision <coughs> for our association. I want to see the growth of our clubs continue at the same rate it has done in the last decade. I want every girl to be given the opportunity to experience the game of Camogie. <clears throat> After recruiting members, I want these important people to be assisted, coached and guided along a player's pathway. So each girl and woman will have the same enjoyable positive experience I had when I started playing at a very young age. Because someone cared enough to invest time in me as a player and a valuable member of my club, I remained a member and I'm still enjoying that experience. I wish to express my appreciation and thanks to Liam O'Neill, Porrick Duffy, Peter McKenna and all of the staff in the GAA for their continued support to the Camogie Association. They've always been very approachable and accommodating to our needs. I want to thank Pat Quill and Helen O'Rourke from the Ladies Gaelic Football Association for their friendship and support over the last three years. I also want to thank our Orso Ahor, Joan O'Flynn, and all of the staff of the Camogie Association for their great work, dedication, and commitment to their jobs, and for their support to me during my term as president. 
Equally, I thank all of the hundreds of volunteers in Ireland and abroad who make this organisation work. And in particular, Mila Buikas to all of those volunteers who took on the commitment to serve on national committees over the last three years. The time you've given to these committees has been greatly appreciated. This Congress sees the end of terms of two Ord Corley members, Liz Howard and Mary O'Brien. I want to thank them both personally and on behalf of the Association for their time and dedication to the rules. And a special thanks to Mary O'Brien, Vice President, who often deputised for me on many occasions. I want to welcome three new members of the Association since last Congress, Niall Jackman, Rona McCarthy and Keane Nelson. I've had an incredible journey during my term. It's been a huge honour and privilege to have been the president of an association that I joined when I was eight years old. I certainly treasure the friends I've met along the way, and I won't forget the individual and collective acts of kindness to me over those years. You're an incredible group of women and men, and I'm extremely proud to be a member of this fantastic organisation. I'm saying goodbye from this position, but I'm not saying goodbye to Camogie. How could I? It's the best game in the world, and I'd be mad not to want to be part of it. I wish my successor, Catherine Neary, all the very best. As I know Catherine will bring her own style and commitment to the role, and I hope Catherine will enjoy her term just as much as I did. Gorav Mila Mila Magov.